This is Lucky Inc. Media. Live from Lucky Inc. Media Studios in Munich, these are the Nutlows Talks. In-depth conversations with designers, artists, connoisseurs, and today's tastemakers. And now, please welcome your hosts, Seams Lookwalt. Enjoy the show. Herzlich willkommen zu Folge 75 von Nahtlos, die Live-Style-Talkshow. Wie immer heiße ich Seams Lookwalt und begrüße euch ganz herzlich zu dieser Sendung. Und die ist im wahrsten Sinne des Wortes traumhaft, denn ich glaube, es gibt äh, wenige Frauen, mit denen unsere Zuhörerinnen so gern tauschen würden, wie mit Victoire de Castellan. Und äh, wem der Name nicht sagt, das ist nicht so schlimm, aber wer sich schon einmal durch äh, die Schmuckwelt von dem Modehaus Dior geklickt hat, vor allen Dingen die Haute Joyerie, der ähm, hat zumindest ihre Werke schon gesehen. Und nicht nur das Leben von Juwelendesignerin Victoire de Castellan liest sich wie ein Märchen. Es ist, wie erwähnt, zudem seit Jahren ihr Job für Dior Joyerie jedes Jahr weitere fabulöse Stücke und Kollektionen zu erfinden, von denen die kleinen und großen Prinzessinnen in aller Welt träumen. Und wie bei den Gebrüdern Grimm steckt auch in Victoires Welt neben allem Prunk aus Gold und Edelsteinen eine kleine Prise Gefahr. So schuf sie vor Jahren gleich eine ganze Reihe von Stücken, die sich äh, fleischfressende und giftige Pflanzen zum Vorbild nahmen. Das sieht dann zwar trotzdem noch wahnsinnig schön aus, aber hat so eine kleine makabere Inspiration im, äh, im Hintergrund. Und zwar eine Riesenfreude mit Victor de Castellan, äh, die wirklich auch sehr lustig, sehr lebhaft, sehr ehrlich und... Äh, sehr anekdotenreich erzählt hat. Das war ein, ein ganz tolles Interview. Eine im Wortsinn fantastische Frau mit einer unbändigen Fantasie. Und äh, ich hoffe und denke, es ist ein lebhaftes, inspirierendes und unterhaltsames Gespräch geworden. Wie gesagt, ich habe sie damals ähm, interviewt für ein Porträt in der Financial Times Deutschland. Und äh, alle Links und alle Infos zu Victoria de Castellan findet ihr wie immer in unseren Shownotes. Das ist die Folge 75 und die könnt ihr euch raussuchen auf nahtlosblog.de slash podcast. Und ich weiß ja nicht, wie ihr uns gerade zuhört, ob über den äh, eingebetteten Player in den Shownotes oder in unserer Sidebar auf der Homepage findet ihr den ja auch immer mit der aktuellsten Folge oder ob ihr uns vielleicht abonniert habt, das ist die bequemste Variante, würde ich sagen. Das könnt ihr machen über die ähm, iPhone, iPad Podcast App von Apple, die könnt ihr euch ganz einfach im App Store downloaden und da lässt sich das äh, wunderbar verwalten, alte Folgen entdecken, neue automatisch downloaden und natürlich auch mit weiteren Podcasts bestücken, sodass man so ein richtig äh, maßgeschneidertes Radioprogramm mit sich rumträgt. Ich bin da mittlerweile total abhängig von, habe eine ganze Menge Podcasts da drauf und äh, die ersetzen nicht nur mein Radio, sondern auch, auch das Fernsehen noch gleich mit, weil das gucke ich fast gar nicht mehr. Also eine Podcast-App wie die von Apple oder auch die Stitcher Radio App sind hier nochmal heiß empfohlen von uns. Und ähm, wir würden uns freuen, wenn ihr uns dort natürlich auch bewertet. Zum Beispiel uns bei iTunes ein paar Sterne gibt, vielleicht auch ein paar mehr. Ihr könnt was dazu schreiben, ihr könnt aber auch einfach nur Five Stars klicken. Und ähm, das hilft uns, vor allen Dingen hilft es aber auch weiteren Hörern, Hörern und äh, Hörerinnen aller Welt, uns zu entdecken, denn dann hüpfen wir im internen Ranking von Apple so ein klein bisschen hoch und dann schlägt uns Apple auch selber mal vor. Das ist doch, äh, das ist doch in unser aller Sinne, denk, äh, Sinne denke ich, denn äh, the more the merrier. Jetzt aber zurück zum Interview mit der Designerin, Chefdesignerin von Dior Joyerie, Victoire de Castellan. Und äh, ich wünsche euch da aber ganz viel Spaß und... Ähm, an alle Ladies da draußen, ruhig mal auf die Website gehen, ähm, 
Das ist wirklich Schmuck, den muss man gesehen haben. Ein bisschen was davon sieht man bei uns in den Show Notes, aber noch mehr natürlich bei Dior Joyerie. Und was sich Victoire de Castellan äh, einfallen lässt, das geht über irgendwelche Anhänger, irgendwelche Ringe wirklich weit hinaus. Das sind Schmuckstücke zum Entdecken, zum Verzaubern und vielleicht auch irgendwann zum Vererben. Ganz viel Spaß bei Folge 75. Now, um, what I what I want to focus. I mean, I'm I'm writing a portrait yes. on you, <laughs> yes. which is ever not a, not an easy thing to do. And um, I wanted to focus with you on uh, a couple of aspects of your work, basically. Yes. First of all, I think you've probably been asked that a million times, but I'll ask it anyway. Yes. Where does your inspiration come from? Well, uh, it's true that. Um, When I was a little child, I was really obsessed very quickly by the jewelry, by the china of the gold and all the colored stones. Right. And I was used to see, to go and see my uh, grandmother, and she was uh, wearing a lot, of, a lot of jewelry that she was matching with her cl clothes. So for me, it was really a, uh, an inspiration source. To see her. To mm -hmm. see her, mm -hmm. to see all those uh, jewelry right. uh, wearing the day, because um, of course I was only see, uh, so seeing her the day. Right. The day. right. <laughs> And uh, also, uh, you know, I think that uh, in the 70s, women were wearing more jewelry like... Uh, Well, I can say that ladies were wearing the jewelry the, the, during the day and were changing mm -hmm. their jewelry for the night. But we, you, you were able to see people in the street with a lot of jewelry, and you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's my memories of. Uh, right. Now, what? What? Um, your, your grandmother belonged to the uh, aristocracy, didn't she? Uh, it's more. Um, well, yes. <laughs> from his, uh, Spanish aristocracy. Aristocracy, right. but right. also my um, my name came from come from my father's name of mm -hmm. uh, the father of my father. Boni. So, uh, Boni Castellan was the right. uh, great great was my great great uncle. Uh huh. Voilà. Right. Oh my gosh. What yeah. an illustrious family. <laughs> um, now, do, do you remember uh, the first piece of jewelry that, that uh, you, maybe your parents or, or um, someone else from your family gave you as a present? Yes, of course. It was my mother's gift. Mm -hmm. It was a bracelet with um, lucky charms that she was... Uh, she, it was a gift for me. She prepared, she, she made, she said to me that she... Um, made um, a collection, she collect some lucky charms for making oh, okay. a little uh, na uh, bracelet, but uh, right. I find some, uh, I don't know how you say, the pins. Uh-huh, okay. You know, pins yes. for cutting metal? Right. I found this at my grandmother's place, but from my mother. Uh -huh. And I broke all the necklace, the bracelet. I broke the lucky charm for wearing them in another way of uh, uh, earrings or changing, you know. And she was really right. sad and because oh. because you, you were a little child, right? Yes, and, and you played and with it. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> I didn't change my way of um, creating and transforming. Jewelry. I love to customize things. I love to change. I love to create more extravagant things. Mm -hmm. And um, on your most recent collections, um, the one for um, this fall and winter, what was the inspiration there? You mean, sorry, the, the collection of the fall winter? Fall winter, uh, yes. 2006, 2007, right now. Yes, and uh, the name of the, because, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things and I don't remember, uh, you mean that there were... Uh, what, what inspired you? For, uh, for next for collection? Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, I have 
have a big collection which is coming at the end of February mm. with the new mm. high jewelry collection. But for the moment, I have to make a surprise for the mm. press. That's why I can't say uh, yes. I can't tell you the the the, the story, uh -huh. but I can tell you that I'm still doing um, uh, unique pieces right. every month. I'm doing creating also pieces for special uh, orders, uh, customers who want special things you, uh, like one off. And right. also, uh, I just presenting uh, the the little uh, story of the Mimi Wee. The Mimi Wee is a big success. It's the m smallest ring of the world uh -huh. that I show, and there is a story about her. And uh, this time, in like in one week, I'm presenting. Uh, but I present last last. Uh, Now, 15 days, I present to the international press okay. the Mimi Wee Obal. It seems it, it is uh, Mimi Wee is going to do, to a party and she has a special <laughs> ring. She has a special dress. So the dress is okay. in diamond. Okay. With something special. Um, now, tell me a little bit about here, the, the special orders you talked about. What are what are customers you can you can name uh, to me that that uh, came well, to the, the you know, house the of Dior? Customers are not well known in the I must say are not well known in the People magazine. You know, they okay. are these are the the really rich, the really important yeah, they people, are right? People who are <laughs> a lot of money of course right. and they are traveling a lot and right. they are more in something uh, di uh, discreet mm -hmm. but or, okay what 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 sort of people uh, uh, are, well, are they among are them uh, international people uh -huh. you are uh, from uh, from asia right also from uh, uh, europe de l'est mm -hmm. i have also um, What I could say, uh, from, uh, Taiwan, uh, from Taiwan, uh, Shanghai, uh, uh, sorry, I'm speaking about... No problem. Uh, USA, from USA. Right, right. Okay, so, so all... From London, but oh, I don't... So all I'm over the world. Yes, but you know, those people, maybe it can be a Russian people in London who right. are asking something. It can be a <laughs> Taiwanese in the USA, you right. know. Right, very international. Well, it very can be an American crowd. in Monaco, so uh, as People are a lot of uh, are, are traveling a lot. Right. You know, I think now it's really something different. Uh -huh. And and wh what do you think? Why why do they do they come to you? Uh, uh, and and um, yeah, what what why, what's why your special gift? Because I think they are looking for creativity mm -hmm. for uh, special uh, volumes for something who is uh, really with a story uh, right. um, completely different than all the jewelry that you can find in other houses of right. jewelry and also they are looking for uh, extravagance mm -hmm. Originality, right. special stones, because I, I love special to stones. I'm working a lot with colored stones. Yeah, like the one with the with the little jade frog. Yes, the jade frog, but also you know with yeah. opals. Yeah, with right. With uh, really lots of strange stones, uh -huh. oh, really special, and I think that people want this now because you know uh, now. Things have changed, and I think that a very rich man or woman who has a big diamond mm -hmm. or a big emerald, they they want they have this okay, but they want other things. Right, right. Um, now, and and how the, how the, how does the, how does this happen then? I mean, do do these people come and they have they already have a, a very distinct idea in their mind and say, uh, you know. Uh, no, they have not really a distinct idea I think okay. because the thing is if they have a very uh, idea very right. precise it's difficult right. for me to create something okay because when people come and say I want this with this with right. this uh, the jury is made uh, right. I don't have this value to do you know uh, I don't right. I don't see the interest okay. to ask me something if they have a price Uh, right. Okay. So, so how do they how do they approach you? I mean, so well, what, what do you talk about when a customer comes to you? They're coming in the in the in the boutique George uh, Jewelry mm -hmm. shop mm -hmm. in Place Vendôme or in Cannes or in Monaco or in Geneva or in London or in Paris. Right. They they come in the boutique and they ask for for 
a special design. Some are people that I know because they both, uh, they are like um, Fidel, um, Fidelity customers. Right. It's not the first time that mm -hmm. they, are, they are buying. Mm -hmm. So I know them and I know what kind of jewelry they like, of what kind of uh, 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 symbolic jewelry they want, you know, mm -hmm. so voila. Mm -hmm. And and then you talk about a, a certain theme and say, well, let's do something with a yes, little fairy yes, exactly. tale, or let's Absolutely. do something Chinese, or yes, okay. so mm -hmm. because uh, be, uh, you know, I have some customer who I've seen on other friends, uh, like a dragon that I designed for those friends, and right. they ask for me if I want to do another. Of course, not the same because I don't do the same thing. <laughs> Uh, to in in uh, the same uh, can I can we have a dragon with mm -hmm. a ball or also they bring me a stone because they have a family stone and okay. I, I, they want like the you will incorporate that into a, a piece of jewelry then yes, you will exactly. use that that's okay and um, what what do you do to to get inspired do you read a lot do you look at paintings well I read a lot yes uh, well I read a lot no uh, not no a uh, lot. I love to see magazine. I love to see people. I love to see movies. I love to to see uh, uh, old uh, antique things. Uh, well, it's I must say that I'm in life, and I like <laughs> to see all the things can inspire me. Right. You, know? you have a you have a, a a favorite movie that that you say, well, that that's really an inspire an, an inspiring movie. I would watch again over and over. Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> no. No. I'm not in. Uh, no. I'm not obsessed by. Uh, okay. By certain things, you're always uh, looking for new. Mm, no. Not. No. Uh, I like new things, mm -hmm. but I like also old things. But I don't like to be obsessed by the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, some are inspired me. Right. I, I don't. I'm not. I don't uh, need to see. At each time again, you know. I don't uh -huh. know if my English is so bad. I'm sorry. No, that's it's it's perfect. It's no problem at all. Oh, thank mm. you. <laughs> um, now, you're you're designing uh, eau joyerie uh, yes. for for Dior. Yes. Um, how much does the, the 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 jewelry pieces? How much do they have to reflect what the fashion house stands for? Is is there? Does there have to be no. a very strong connection, or no, are you completely free? Not. We are absolutely in the same house, but not working together. Mm -hmm. So um, I have the well, fashion and, and jewelry is something completely different. Of course, because the the time it's very long to create a piece of jewelry. Right. And, you know, fashion, fashion changes twice a year at least. Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Absolutely not. Uh, we are not. Wor I'm not working with John, mm -hmm. and um, the f your fashion is not in my um, my uh, inspiration. But I must say that I'm in the house of couture. Right. I love the energy of this house, mm -hmm. um, and also, um, well, I love fashion too. So things I, I love to watch uh, shows mm -hmm. or and. What's going on? I don't know. Yeah, well, right. And you know, I look and what's happening. Maybe something is going to inspire me in two yeah. years. But you what know? would you say um, does? I mean, if if I'm a customer and I come to Place Vendôme yes. and um, I look at your jewelry, um, do you think that I would recognize? Oh, these are Dior pieces. Yes. What's what's the signature? You know, what's what's your what's? Ah, by my signature, I can tell you, I have big, big volumes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of colored stones. Right. I have also tiny, tiny volumes right. because I love contrast. Right. Uh, I have always all the jewelry are telling a story because I love to uh, tell a story when I'm creating something. Right. And there is a really a special spirit for the. Jewelry. It's difficult mm -hmm. for me to say that because I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's I know. Just only. You're not looking from the outside, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and I tell you, I'm just telling you like this because I know that we are different. Uh -huh. It's not. Uh, I'm not telling this that we are different. We are better. It's only because we are different. Right. Right. Voilà. Okay. If we are better, it's not <laughs> from me to say that. 
right. for the other people, you know, but I can just tell you that I don't want to do the same thing that the, the other jurors are doing, yeah. doing it, yeah. because I don't see the interest for the other to have the same things. Right, right. Um, what... Uh, do, do you have any plans? I mean, I know you you did um, like the, the the chocolate ring. That was a a, yeah. a man ring also, right? Yes, also it can be yes. Um, are you interested in doing men's jury jury? Uh, not so much. I tell you, I have some jewelry who can be wear worn uh -huh. by men. Yeah. But I'm not really in those kind of jewelry for men because right. I must say that I'm really more uh, inspired by feminine world and it's so not so easy for men to put really feminine rings or jewelry you know exactly. but 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 we have a lot of men who are buying skull skull heads you know uh -huh. also they have we have cufflinks with skull heads also those men are buying gourmet ring Okay. With like an androgyne uh, ring. Right. So it depends if the man is more rock and roll than a <laughs> financial man, you know. Right, right. <laughs> of course, I love the idea of a man wearing a big, big ring, but uh, I don't know what kind of uh, work he has to do. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, he's probably not a banker. Yes, well, uh, <laughs> maybe he has enough personality to don't. Right. Don't care, you know. But yeah, yeah. Now, from from your educational background, you're not a um, you're not a trained goldsmith, right? Uh, or are you? Mean, you? you mean? I'm sorry. I don't you're not. You're not. Um, you're not really like handcrafting the jewelry. You're the designer. Yes. And someone else makes it. Ah uh, yes, of course. Yes. Who, yes. who is that? Workshop. Is that is that in house? No, it's a workshop. All in Paris, they're mm -hmm. all working for the big houses of uh, ah, the Place Vendôme. Right. But we have also people who are working only for us, but they are not in the house, but they mm -hmm. have their own workshop. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Voilà. And and you're like the supervisor, you, you hand right. them your drawings and, and see that the quality is right and that the piece of course, the piece matches your, your imagination of it. Of course, because I have to see the to from A to Z because mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm responsible. <laughs> I have to I can't let something uh, coming and I don't like it. Then it's Yes. Then it's all it'll be changed. <laughs> Uh -huh. Things can be changed sure. in the middle of, um, you know, of the fabrication, right. and also uh, uh, things can. Uh, when I see the, maybe the the jewelry at the beginning can give me another idea from mm -hmm, another mm -hmm. one. So I love, of course, I need to control all the things. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's expensive, also. I yeah, have, I, uh, I figure that. Yeah, you know, we have to be. <laughs> Care. Yeah, right. Now I have just three more questions. Yes. The first one is, um, why is jewelry important? Why is jewelry important? I yeah. think jewelry is something really ancestral, you know. Right. From the beginning, uh, the, the men and women love to have uh, uh, an idea of luxury, wearing beautiful uh, accessories and beautiful jewelry, and also the idea of uh, parure, um, like uh, parure... Um, a set, right? You know, the set in the way of uh, being beautiful, uh -huh. uh, wearing something that makes you more beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's something very uh, uh, ancestral from the from the antique, right? Antiques, right? Uh, voilà. uh, like makeup. You know, all the uh -huh. Greek and Roman women were putting makeup. Mm -hmm. Egyptian people mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. putting makeup. Yes. So it's something. Um, who That's is, been with us all this time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why the chef of the village needs to be the more, <laughs> with the more beautiful crown or feather, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, it's from something right. long, long, uh, of our, for me, luxury is not something of the 27th, 20th century, you mm -hmm. know? It's something really old, old, old. <laughs> And also because jewelry is something that you is very important for um, for people because it's something with value mm -hmm. something you can 
keep with you and take when you're traveling and you also you can sell if you need. Right. You have, you, you have money. Okay. Uh, a kind of dot also in right. like uh, Moyen-Orient, you know, countries. Right. All the women love to have jewelry because they, it's their, uh, their propri uh, property. Right. It's, property. it's their, yeah, it's... it's if mm -hmm. the man doesn't <laughs> want, more, you know, if right. the... Well, I'm sorry. It's no problem. I, uh, I perfectly I got their English, point. I'm French, maybe, no, what do you prefer? In English, maybe it's more easy. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, the idea of, uh, th for those ladies who are in the Moyen-Orient, right. their hus husband want to divorce, they have their jewelry for them, you right. know? Right, and that so they could keep and support course. themselves by that, and yeah. And also what is very important and the most important thing for me with jewelry is something that can... The idea of eternity, it uh -huh. means that you can transmit to your daughter, right. to your little daughter, and it's a part of you who is staying eternally on your daughter ring, or daughter fingers. Right. You know, it's Very it romantic. <laughs> yes, it remembers you, and you yeah. are directly on the skin of the people uh, uh -huh. jewelry, so it's something really intimate. Do you yourself wear lots of jewelry? or well, I don't... Not so much. I, I don't wear a lot, but I wear some pieces. That like from I your saw. from your grand grandmother. I have some my grandmother, yeah. uh, uh -huh. but also um, I have rings that I love because they, I can see them when I'm working. I have my uh, ring at my hand, so I can have a I can have a look on my ring and <laughs> I I profit. I, um, is so is that is that a ring you did you did yourself? Is it? I mean, do you? Uh, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I made it for myself. It's a unique piece and uh, with my favorite stone, and uh, it's my ring. <laughs> yeah, could you could you describe it a little more? What 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 does it look like? When when did you make it first uh, of all? Well, uh, well, I have like a three or four that I I have, who are all with different opals. Uh -huh. So I have a ring with a blue opal, I have a ring with a, a white opal with pink fires, and I, la I have another ring with, I don't know, I don't remember, but they're all, uh, they're all uh, made in one-off, and right. they are all with the different design. And your, your, your one favorite ring among these would be? I have a one favorite with, with a big opal, old opal, uh -huh. From Australia. Which which color? Blue, green, red, yellow. Oh my god. And uh, orange. Okay. They are all fires like that. Mm -hmm. And she's with diamonds. It's with diamonds. And the, I made the the idea of the, the the monture is something really like a forty in the forties. Right. Something for like a movie star in the forties. The it, it's more like a John Crawford <laughs> for me. I see, a, I see an actress. I uh -huh. see movies that wearing it, so I, it was inspired me to create. Right. And and when did you create that? Which oh, year I, was I that? I created this one two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. But I, I must say that I can't wear it every day because it's a big ring and I have to, it's a little fragile, so I have to take care because I'm not really... Uh, I'm more like a boy, uh, you know, in my... I know. So I, you would you would do your washing up wearing yes, the ring and I stuff, don't like to and it would get. I my ring, so uh -huh. I have to take care. Okay. But it's my uh, night ring, evening rings, we can say. Oh, okay. Well, no. Do you have uh, by any chance a picture of that ring? Uh, no, but uh, we can try. I have also, an, uh, but I can find uh, you another one that I love. It's my incredible ring that I put at every evening mm -hmm. with a big aquamarine. Okay, and what's the story behind that? The story is Flo it's a swimming pool. Uh -huh. it's, La Flo it's Florida with all the dof dolphins. Okay, and, and why, why did you do that? Do you love Florida? Yeah, no, because no. it was really something like uh, funny, like I don't know, there is something really um, tactile, super artificial in that, that ring, that, like a Disney world. Right. Yeah, I, I, it's, like, it's traveling when I see I'm. Um, I think I'm traveling to Florida, right. but like without the people. And and when when did you create that? Uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Okay. And it's an aqua aquamarine. Yes, of with 80 carats. Oh my goodness, quite a big stone. And I can send you the photo. Oh, that will be great. Okay. That will be great. Okay. Mm -hmm.
And I, last question, do you have a favorite fairy tale? Because so much of your jewelry, I mean, it uh, looks for me like it's it's for a princess or it's out of a exactly. out of a fairy tale. Yes. Do you have a fa uh, favorite fairy tale? Well, I must say that uh, I I love some fairy tales hmm? uh, like uh, the blue bird. I don't know if you know the story of the blue bird of uh, or the little the little uh, pr uh, la princesse au petit pois. Mm -hmm. The little pea. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. little and the princess. Right. So she was uh, sleeping with a lot of. Um, uh, she was always feeling these little bees in her bed, and she put a lot of uh, mattress. mattresses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> story. Yes, I know. Okay. It. I love those kind of story, but I don't have one really uh -huh. okay. that I love because all I inspire me. Okay. I love to create the ring of the step mother of Blanche Nez, uh, of <laughs> White Snow. And, you know, I have, I have rings for all uh -huh. those characters. Do you, do you like to yes. read? Cinderella, uh, I have right. also her shoes on the <laughs> ring. Right. Do you, do you like to read uh, stories or fairy tales to your maybe nieces or do you have children? Uh, yes, I have children. I have four children and okay. I only like to, to imagine. Oh, okay, so you're, yes. you're right. I you're imagine things okay. terrifying. <laughs> terrifying <laughs> things. <laughs> and then they can't sleep. <laughs> no, they can't sleep. I'm a monster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But <laughs> no, but I like to imagine because, you know, uh, I don't like things that I know very well. I prefer to discover, so right. I like to imagine. Okay, and may I ask uh, a last question? Ask you how old you are for the piece, please. Uh, I have the, the I am. Uh, I, I like to say that I have the age of what people want to give me. That's good. <laughs> we'll write that. <laughs> we can write that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> Now, thanks very much Thank for you taking the time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our show. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and spread the word. Oh, and we're on Facebook too. Drop us a line. We'll be back next week. <laughs>